I want to teach you what it means to pray from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. And if you are not working, make sure that between 5 to 7 in the morning, you are asleep. The dreams you will have, most people have weird dreams. Those dreams are around 12, 1, 2, 3. Demonic dreams. Because that is the time most often demonic activities take place. Now, have you bothered to find out why? Please, so if they are recording, they should start because I'm gone. Why the Bible said that Genesis, I think, is 28. Was it 28? That was, and Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled with him a man to the breaking of the day. So an angel visits Jacob, Adon. And Adon, we are talking about three, four, five. And the angel realized that it is about to be day. The sun is about to appear. And the angel knows that if he doesn't vanish, he will remain on it or back up. So the angel begins to fight Jacob and says that if anybody is in the place, they should help me. 32, 32, 24. And, there was, and Jacob was left alone and there wrestled with him. An angel wrestled with him. Can I have very fast? So this angel says that it's about to be daybreak. They are daybreak angels. They are midnight angels. There are afternoon angels. There are evening angels. And so this angel says, I must disappear before the breaking of day. Why? Because by break of day, that angel cannot go to where he's coming from. The portal will close. So, this angel says, I am going. Okay, for the day breaks. So, what does it mean for the day breaks? The day breaks between three, four, five, six. And Jacob says, No, you are not going. And until you bless me, I won't allow you to go. Now, the angel became violent and hits Jacob in his thigh. What to make an angel beat somebody? I thought angels are not supposed to be violent. Because the angel knows that if he sees him passes, his ability to go back to where he's coming from will be close. It's like going to America with a flight and the flight leaves you. He has to be stranded. So Jacob now holds on to this person and says that you are not leaving. To cut a long story short, the angel, he tells the angel, you have to bless me before. And of course, angels don't just bless. He said, before I bless, let me look into your history and look at what you can get. Then he said, you are called Jacob, but you name you Israel, and so you be this, you be that, by a prince and call. But the question is, why would the angel say, I'm leaving because it is daybreak? I'll give you another story before we move to our central scripture for today, Mark chapter 6. Another scripture you will see is that you will see John chapter 5, the pool of Bethsaida. At the pool of Bethsaida, the Bible said they have put so many sick people there. And each one waits for the stirring of the waters. And when the water is stirred, whoever jumps in first gets healed. 
I've always asked myself, that why is this person by this school for 38 years? But it's not our jam CV first, number one. Maybe if it's today, when he's supposed to be jumping into the water, he is what's happening. It's about timing. When he's supposed to be in the water, that is the day he doesn't feel like jumping. When he's supposed to be praying, that is the day he feels like not praying. The time he's supposed to pray a particular prayer, that's the time he doesn't want to pray. So he has done that excuse, that excuse, that excuse, that excuse for 38 years. But anybody that falls into the river at that particular season gets healed. Now, there are eight watches in the, in the Bible, but with time, I don't know whether I'll do that because I've taught on all the eight watches and people didn't take it serious. But I want to start doing from the three o'clock to six a.m. one. Now, let's look at Okay, let's look at the next scripture first. Don't go to Mark chapter 6 yet. Because Mark chapter 6 will take us into two different watches. So let's look at um, 1 Samuel chapter 11. I'm going to have to check my status this morning. How many check my status? I put some scripture in first somewhere 11. You don't check it. Oh. Hmm. Is it 11 9? Okay. So these people, the Gilead people were there, and this word came to them and said, Make a covenant with us. If you don't make a covenant with us, you plug your eyes out. And the people went to Saul and said, Saul, come and help us. And Saul got angry and he said, tell the people that I'm coming. But look, read that scripture. And they said, they said to the messenger who came, that's which I say to the men of Jephthah Gilead, tomorrow, by the time the sun is hot. When is the time hot? It's not six a.m. It's twelve. He said, tell them by the time the sun is hot, you shall have help. Now, let me tell you this. Sometimes you wonder why Jews, Muslims, they are successful. We Christians pray every day, every time. It's good. Men ought to pray every day. But these people understand that at every particular watch, there are particular type of angels that are, re- that are released for particular assignments. Like if you want your day to be good, your prayer must be from three to six. We call it command in your morning commanding your morning. You must command your morning. Now, let's not forget, the steadfast love of the Lord, they never cease. They are new what? Every morning. So you, you wake up at night. By that time, I check mercy name here. I check here. It's gone. So in Mark chapter 6, let's do it. Mark chapter 6, 45. This is Jesus. He has just multiplied bread for the people to eat. And Jesus realized that his disciples were tired. So the Bible said immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. And he, was, he went and told the messenger there, people who are giving them bread, go home, they won't go home. So he did like 
play like play and he dodged them. Jesus is a smart man. He pushed the disciples. I told you yesterday, those of you who heard that, if you find a place that Jesus prayed with multitude, come and show me. Any real prayer Jesus prayed, he prayed alone. I, mean, I always tell people that you will never like my prayer topics. Because my prayer topics is not like, Lord, give me a house. Lord, give me a car. No, 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 no. Deliver me from this demon. No. You will get into that one day. Now, if you read the Bible, you will know that Jesus drove them away and then he went, he sent them away and he departed a mountain to pray. Uh, why would he send the disciples away? You should know that any time Jesus prayed with his disciples, human beings have a way of frustrating you when you want to pray. Peter, James, and John were always praying at the prayer meeting. <laughs> so sometimes, if you know that you are going to be sending people who will frustrate you in prayer, pray alone. Because it is a spirit. If, let's say, I'm praying with you, and you start yawning, he said, looking at your watch, it is likely I want to do the same. So he sent the multitude that way and then he went on a mountain to pray. Now let's look at the next one, 47. Now, can the sun be tuned a bit? A cheeky carcass. Now when evening came, what is evening? When is evening? 6 p.m. This is 6 in the evening. Those of you who do mathematics, let's be at it. When evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea and it was alone on the land. Look at this critically. So Jesus started praying before 6 p.m. He came and found out that the boat he had put the disciples in was in the middle of the sea and he was on the land. Let's read on. Then he saw them straining at rolling for the wind is them. Now about the fourth watch. Now if you say the fourth watch, you don't understand it. So can I have NLT or message or NIV? Let's look at what is the fourth watch. About three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so let's look at this. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three. He says, has prayed ten hours. You, the son of God, has prayed ten hours. You, son of the devil. <laughs> son of a fetish. Son of MD Yali. Son of a shrine. Son of a voodoo. From the evening, okay, let's go back to 47 in NLT. Late that night, the disciples were in their boat in the middle of the lake, and Jesus was alone on land. 48. So from that late night, he saw them were in a serious storm, rolling hard, struggling against the wind and waves. And about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them, walking on the water. So look at the distance. What time did Jesus start walking on the water? Three o'clock. He intended to go past them. Let's look at another. But when they saw him walking on the water, they cried out into it, thinking he was a ghost. Of course, if you pray ten hours, you look like a ghost. Moses spent forty days with God, and by the time he came down, his face was shining. They couldn't look at him. And when you pray 10 hours, you will walk on every storm. Now, listen. If you look at this kind of prayer, you see that Jesus had dealt with the evening watch, the midnight watch, and was now going to deal with the morning watch. So he spoke to them at once. Do not be afraid, he said. Take courage, I am here. 51. They climbed into the boat and the wind stopped. 
they were totally amazed. 52. For they still didn't understand the signal of the miracle of the loaves. Their hearts were hard to take it. They were still thinking about the miracle of yesterday. But they didn't and we were not even thinking about how Jesus was able to walk on the water and come to them. So a man, listen to me, who prays evening prayer and midnight prayer will walk over any demonic situation by day. And I'll get into that another day. If you want to deal with, if you feel you are under demonic attack, the time to pray is from 12 to 3. Now that 12 to 3, if you are sleeping, let's say you pray the entire which and you sleep the following day, I can promise you, you have a demonic attack in a dream because you call for war and you are sleeping. It's like you beat somebody yesterday and today they came waiting for you and you didn't come. Please, am I teaching something here? So now let's look at another scripture that will help us. And those of you, the prayer topic, I'm not going to give. How many of you send me a message that I gave them a prayer topic? If I gave you the prayer topic, I told you that do not send it to anybody. That was the instruction behind it. Because people saw it. Hey, Sel, did you get on the prayer topic? Okay. What was the rule? Uh, I do not send it to anybody. Because I, I was putting it on the platform. If you want it. But I realize most of you don't want it. So let's look at Mark chapter 1, verse 35 to 37. Let's look at the 3 o'clock. The fourth watch. That's what the fourth watch. To the... Six o'clock, and let's not forget. I've told you that between five and seven, you should be sleeping after those prayers. If you go to work, try and end the prayer around four thirty five and sleep small before you go and bath and go to work. Except you have eyes like some of us whose eyes are just open, you can see. But David was telling me he did it and some dreams he had. Did you have some? You see things. You will see one day. You will see the one doing you got feeling a noche. Bridge has what they How many of you saw it on Tim Bridge and you bypassed me? I know all of you. Because I went to check it and it showed information. Mark chapter 1, from verse 35. Now, before daybreak, before what? Yes, I was talking. About. Before daybreak, Pastor Victor, you look like I didn't move a car. Before daybreak, and the, the word before daybreak. When is daybreak? Before six a.m. If you hear sundown, it's after twelve. Sun is hot. It's eleven twelve. Before daybreak. Now let's repeat. That's fine again. In Genesis 32, at what time did the angel and Jacob struggle before they break? Let's check it again. Genesis 32, 24, and Jacob was left alone, and there were a man resting with him on what? The breaking of day. And I'll tell you, you decide your day. How your day will run is it's time between 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. If you fail or you succeed, that's the time that the spiritual world decide you are going for um, um, uh, friends say, um, a date. You want the marriage to work. You are going for a visa. You are going for how do you call it? An appointment. A job. That is the time to get up and pray. By that time, the one you are going to meet is sleeping. And by that time, the witches in your family too are working. 
the, the witches and wizards make decisions between 12 and 3. So when you come between 12 and 3, you are going to just do the opposite. Should we go on? So Jacob was left alone. And let me tell you this. This kind of prayer, I always tell people, it is not advisable to pray in a company. Pray it alone. Pray it alone. So let's go back to Jesus' own before daybreak. Am I teaching? Good. So now in the morning, having risen a long while before, that means that day, Jesus slept early. Having risen. You see, sometimes we only read that Jesus slept in the boat. But having risen mean, meaning he slept. So sometimes when you know you're going to search, you see, depending on the situation you are in, can he say that this week I'm going for 12 o'clock to three prayers? Can also decide that this month I'm going from three o'clock to 12 prayers. Now, if you're going to go for 12 to, um, let's say, you're even going to go to 12 to 6, you must make sure that you sleep early by 7, 8, Wada. Sleep well. And when you wake up, bath. Put on powder. Look fresh. Get outside your compound. Now, in the morning, having risen a long while before daybreak, where was the disciples? They were still asleep. He woke up a long while before daybreak. Why Mark said before a long while before daybreak is because he didn't know when he woke up. But he knows that before daybreak he was up. You, before daybreak, where are you? That's how you move from a planetary bed. <laughs> he went out. Where was he? Then he went out means that he was sleeping with them. He went out. He doesn't want to disturb them. That means the prayer he was going to pray was not. You don't disturb anybody. He moved out and departed a solitary and independent place. And there he prayed. What was on the prayers he prayed? We'll talk about that as we go on. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. When they woke up, they looked for this man. They didn't find him. But when they found him, let's look at what they said. And when they found him, they said to him, everyone is what? Looking for you. Esther, that's why your business and your clients are looking for you. That is when the man who can marry you will call you and look for you. That is when the lady who must marry you. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> See, everyone is looking for you. Man, I'm facing a lot of disappointment and said back, you don't have you don't have a problem. Take your seat. The angels that change destiny, angels that change destiny, that promote destiny as Jacob, they are encountered between 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. And guess what? That is the time that sleep is sweet. I remember those days. When Peace FM came, around 3 o'clock, then they put in this. And I used to get up at that time and pray. These days, too much of radio and TV has worried us. Those days, there was not much radio and TV. So the one you get, you take it like that. Now, you can roam and roam station to station for you like this a.m. Oh, they will pay with, but I don't want this. <laughs> Is it true or it's not true? You can run from station to station till this morning. That is why sometimes what I tell people that select your kind of music. Do your own MP3. Put it on your phone and get an earpiece. If the room is yours, get a, um, then a sound bar. And then lock your door. I 
are looking for you. You are a Basanta leader. You are struggling with your souls. They are dodging you. They are dodging you. No, if you get up between three and six, I can promise you, they will be the one to come and tell you, are you not going, getting ready for us to go to church? They will look for you. Because by the time the person wakes up, there is a dream the person is going to dream. One day, if you read this same story about Jacob, Laban decided to go and fire Jacob. Between that same time, an angel woke up and told Laban in a dream, if you don't know if you speak good or bad to Jacob, you are in trouble. The angel was interested. He told him that you can go and see Jacob, but when you meet him, don't say anything good or anything bad. Because if you say good, you'll be more blessed. If you say bad, it will come to you. So Jacob came to um, um, Laban came to Jacob because all men were come and told Jacob that I wanted to do you harm, but the God of your fathers revealed himself to me. So you give me my gods and let me go. What do you do? What do you use your day break for? Look at somebody and say, I must learn to command my money. Okay, let's read. Go. It's on the, sc- in the, in the screen. Go. What does it say? Oh, read it for me. you don't have a father so I don't know which God of your father will visit him. tell them to <laughs> that is just by the way can we go on how many of you give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 7 This is the time that God causes your enemies to scatter. Give me another scripture, Isaiah 22, Read this one to go. I can't hear you. The key of the house of what? I will lay on his shoulder so he shall open and no one shall shut. He shall shut and no man shall open. Now that is the time these keys are given to you. Let's look at Job 38 verse 12. Ask somebody this question. Read. Have you commanded the morning since your days began? (laughs) Have you done that so far in your life? (laughs) Are you with me? Are you with me? So, as a believer, you must do what? You must command your what? Morning. You must do what? Command your what? Now, I declare the month of April the month of commanding mornings. But we are starting now. We, everybody must be up. So, what you can do is that when you wake up, you take your phone, your WhatsApp, if you don't have data, call a friend in the house, a neighbor in the house, say, we are starting. If you call somebody, it doesn't pick, don't call again. 
Is it a good one? Are, are you with me? Say, I want to command my money. Somebody wants to help you, doesn't want to help you. Wake up at that time. Mention his name. Dip your foot in oil. Me if you call me Tofia, I don't <laughs> Many of us don't command our days. They say many, and I trouble many, and I mean I'm high, and I mean I'm going to meet this, and I'm meeting trouble. Remember, they plan an accident. It happened. They plan this. God, why are you doing to me? You are not in charge of your morning. Psalm 30, verse 5. Weeping is for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Ah, give me a navy of Psalm 63, verse 1. Psalm 63, verse 1 to 3. Oh God, you are my God. And I. Okay, let's read. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul tests for you. My body longs for you in a dry and what? Well and where there is no water. That's the time that your desire must be strong. Let's go to. I've seen you in the center be and beheld your power and your glory. Verse 3. Because your love is greater than life and my lips will glorify you. May your lips glorify God in that morning. I didn't hear you. Now there's a version, I forgot which version is this, that said that very early in the morning I will seek you. I want it. Same Psalm 63. If you want to find God, you find God in the morning. By afternoon, God is gone. How many of you know a, a serious father cannot be found in the house in the morning? A serious father goes to work. By the time you wake up, he's gone. So if you are a child and you need to ask your father for shoes and school fees, you time your father. As soon as your father is sitting at breakfast, you're going to present your petition. If you don't know your father goes to work, there are no school fees now, but you go to school without fees. Oh, okay. So the word early, will I seek you? The other verse, the other verse that talks about that early is you must seek God in the morning. Someone say, I must seek him in the morning. Psalm 127 says, 1 to 2, that it is vain to rise up early and sit up late and eat the bread of sorrow. He gives his beloved sleep. Now, that is also the time to love God. Worship. That's the time you sing a song like, Wake my spirit to glorify the Lord. You didn't go to this kind of church. Wake my spirit to glorify the Lord. Ishira and Kanyanko Ponaniba. Aye, and Kanyanko Ponaniba. And Trun Trun. And Kanyanko Ponaniba. Yan Mosun. Wake my spirit. Somebody, Yan Yamisun, sorry, Yamiai. Yamisun, twin, sorry, Yamiai. Let my spirit arise to glorify God. So that time you wake up and your spirit is, we glorify your name. You are worshiping, you are lifting your spirit. We glor-. You know, because when you do that, his presence comes to you. So you start your day with his presence. You start the day with him. We worship you. Oh, we glorify your name. Hosea chapter 6, verse 3. We worship you. Let's read. Let us acknowledge the Lord. So that is time to acknowledge the Lord. 
His going forth is to establish as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and the former rain. Can I have NIV or NLT to this? Some say, as surely as the sun rises, he will appear. Do you know, do you know that our people, the Muslims, when they are doing a 40 day fast, they don't joke with that morning prayer. Hey! But you know, when you bomb, ah, bomb. They will go to the mosque. 3 a.m. They are going to the mosque. Three of us. What are we doing? I slept him. She said, We are damn an itching. <laughs> oh, that we might know the Lord. Let us press on to know him. He will respond to us as sure as the river of dawn or the coming of rains in the early spring. I don't know if you start waking up at dawn to pray. It's not when the alarm blows, you say, say, say pshaw. Oh Lord, as I go for this business meeting, I know these people are asleep now. Dream and let them dream. Let them see themselves signing the checks. Let them see themselves releasing the money. Let them see themselves releasing the breakthrough. Lord, visit them. Lord, let my angel visit them. If the bad angel from my background, that will go and let them see that if they give me the money, I will chop. So they will give it to me. Oh Lord, I bind it. Let you. <laughs> <laughs> I've told you this story before where I promised somebody I'll give you money to go and collect his certificate and whilst early morning I was sleeping I had a dream that he has come to the house and he has beaten everybody and I, I took him like this and threw him outside my gate this is way back Mala and Pastor David came to knock my door in the morning back 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 what is it? The carpenter is here. He says, you say you should come for money. Said, After this dream, <laughs> well, I gave him the money because I don't fear the devil. Amen. I didn't hear you. Amen. Amen. Psalm, fifth, Psalm 5. Oh, God. Some five. Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring my request to you and wait what? Patiently. When? When do you bring your request? In the morning. In the morning. You are a kitchen kitchen. You are a kitchen kitchen. You are a he gives his daily bread. In the morning, he's distributed already. It's not that you two are coming. Watch you. He's touched. He's given up all the money for the day already. It's not that you are coming to your request. It's like soldiers. By morning, they already know where they are going. And you go and say that, can, you, can I have one? <laughs> if you need it, you have made a request long ago. Listen to my voice in the when. Oh, may God hear your voice in the morning. I say, may God hear your voice in the morning. May God hear your voice each morning. If you don't say amen, I suspect you. Psalm 143, verse 8 to 10. May the morning bring you a special word. This morning, I got a special word. Psalm 143, verse 8 to 10. Let me hear of your unfailing love. When? May you hear God's love each morning. Not in the afternoon. For I am trusting you. Now look at it. Show me where to walk. For I give myself to you. Today, where should I go? There's a song Pastor David likes singing. What must I do? Da, 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 da. You know the song. Please, Lord, show me the way. 
Father, I will rise again. I will rise again. I will rise again. Now listen. Rescue me from my enemies, Lord. I ran to hide in you. These are the prayers you are praying in the morning. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your gracious spirit lead me forward on a firm footing. You are praying this in the morning. Most of us say, when I teach the watches, I put them together, and my pen, them, and my. Now I'm taking time. Chapter 4, 18 and 19. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. Do you want more? I should end. Verse 18 to 19. The way of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn. Jesus looked at Peter. He said, I told you. He said, Peter, before the cock crows three times, you will deny me. When do cocks crow? Dawn. This is the time people deny their salvation. Ah, that we pa in that I'm in quiet. They have been yelling, they say, I'm not going to be Sorry, you are sleeping on the floor. Then if God gives you honeymoon mattress, what will you do? Your whole body is even paining you. The path of the just is like a shining light that shines what? A very bright each day. Now give me the M, NIV or the NLT, please. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of the day. So when, okay, the way of the righteous is the what? The, now give me 18. First, please. The way of the right is like the first dream of dawn. Now let me tell you this. When you ask God between 3 and 6, to guide you through the day. The more the sun is shining, the more you are brightening. But verse 19 says, the way of the wicked, those who don't pray for the morning, <laughs> the more somebody is brightening, the more you are dimming. The way of the wicked is like total darkness. They have no idea what they are stumbling over. You wake up, you don't even know what happened to you. I realize this thing that whenever you give your tithe, you always know what to do with money. It's funny because when you make hundred cities and ten cities, I just kind of swat it. So all of a sudden, you start thinking like, I can't waste the rest of the money. But when it is full, it looks like ah, I have a lot of money. But as soon as ten percent leaves, the money looks insufficient. There's a psychological way it happens. Is it true? Is not true? May you walk in the light. And I mentioned this, but some of you will need a scripture, so let's do it. Lamentation chapter 3, 22 to 23. In the morning when I wake up, I will sing my praise unto you, my Lord. Now let's read. The faithful law of the Lord Never his mercies also what never ceases. Verse 30 23. Great is upon his mercy begin afresh. What each morning? His mercies begin afresh when you to each morning. What are you doing? You can wake up at three o'clock and watch a movie. Hi, not a Jackie Chan. Oh, why I can't sleep. 
Somebody wish the person can't sleep at that time. Some people get up at, at 3 a.m. You know what they are doing? Watching status. Going from Facebook to Instagram. Seeing what people have written down. Because that is, that time the data is free. It's low. When I wish I will wake up and pray. <laughs> yeah. I mentioned once, so write it down, don't give it to some 30 verse 5. We may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 6 and LT. Your success is determined by the seeds you plant. And the Bible sees your morning waking and your prayer like a seed. Plant your seeds. 11 verse 6. Plant your seeds in the morning and keep busy all afternoon. For you don't know if profit will come from one activity or another. Maybe both. So this one is saying that the fact that you pray in the morning doesn't mean you pray in the afternoon. So me sana. Shemi most of you don't have to sing it, don't worry. Oh, not a Give me Proverbs 13 22. I said, I said what? 13.22 May you have an inheritance for your children. Now let me tell you this. I realize this thing that people who pray early in the morning their family pick it up. If you're a father and a mother, you have a hobby of praying in the morning, your children pick it up. One of the best inheritance you can leave for your children is teaching them to pray early morning prayers. When you wake up and your child tells you, hey, that you have not prayed. How many of us want to be praying? Okay, let's look at some scriptures, some stories. And Exodus chapter 12, 31 to 51. You will know that Exodus chapter 12, 31 to 51, you will know that it was between midnight and morning that Israel left Egypt. The angel of death, Pharaoh sent for Moses Aaron, during the night. Get out. Leave my people and take the rest of them with you. Go and worship your Lord. The midnight, the angel came to strike them dead at midnight. Spirit of death happens between that 10, 11, 12. So at midnight, between 12 and 3, Pharaoh said, come, come and meet me. Because the angel came at 12. By 3, he has called Moses and Aaron and said, come, leave the country, leave me leave. I don't, I don't want you again. But now, let's read. 32. Give me 32. Take your flocks, heads. Now, this is the time Moses, the Pharaoh said that, first said, you can go, but you, you can go. Serve God, you marry. Serve God, you don't have goat. You don't have sheep. You don't have money. Now, he says, hey, take everything you want. If, if you want to borrow our gold and our silver, I will give it to you. Leave. Now, if you become crazy, you can start from 12 midnight. That is more dangerous. Let me tell you this. If you are not strong, don't try it. 
but it's good. The best fast is not the day fast. It's the night fast. I never tried night fasting before. 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Oh, each everything would you will see that night fast. But it's because I go to work. My work is like that. I'm always cooking. So I'm always have to taste food. Don't worry. Do the night fast. <laughs> and that one do you you can grow slim better. Look, if you think I'm lying, check your weight before you sleep. And check your weight when you wake up. You always know that there's a difference. Your body takes in a lot of energy even in your sleep. Especially if you wake up and you go to poo poo. So that everything has turned to something else. Take your flocks, your hands. Go. But bless me as you live. Look at the enemy. Look at Pharaoh. You want blessing. As I live. The next one. All the Israelites and the people of Israel to go out of their land. This is where you pray and your, your, the witches and wizards will say, I sit on your life. I sit on your marriage. I sit on your marriage. Oh, leave. They are the one begging you. Leave. Leave us. Leave us. Because go to 12 midnight, the war. And you entered. So 12 midnight is the warfare. 3 a.m. is the institution of what you want. So people go to 12 midnight, they pray warfare, and then they sleep by morning. Killing Goliath doesn't make you a king. And I realized that the last judgment that God will always give to people is die, killing them. When God starts killing your enemies, they will start waking up. And don't let anybody tell don't pray judgmental prayers. 2 Kings chapter 19 verse 35 Should I end? Then that night the angel of the Lord went out into the Assyrian camp and killed how many? 185,000 When the surviving Assyrian woke up the next morning they found corpses everywhere. The time to pray for your enemies to die is midnight. Not in the afternoon. Not in the evening. The angel of death, actually, it is reported that people die at night than during the day. As to why. Maybe if I meet God, I'll ask. Heart failure, heart attack. They don't know what happened. One angel killed how many people? 185,000. How many enemies do you have? Please, let's look at them. (laughs) Please, I beg you. How many enemies do you have? If you have more than 100, let me see your hands. By the time you wake up in the morning, you will see that, ah, your enemies are gone. Let's look at another midnight miracle. Acts chapter 12 from verse 5. Midnight is 12 to 3. Three to six is done. So we are combining these things. Peter was kept in prison, but the church prayed endlessly for him. Let's look at the time the church was praying. The night before Peter was to be placed on trial, day, he was asleep, fasting with two chains between two. So the others stood guard at the prison gate, seven quickly. Suddenly there was a bright light in the sun, an angel of the Lord stood before him. Then he struck him on the side, woke him up, and get up, and the chains fell off his wrist. We know the time. Then the angel told him, get dressed and put on your sandals. And he got that. Now put on your coat. Follow me. And the angel ordered. The next one. So Peter left the cell following the angel. But all the time he thought it was a vision. He didn't realize it was actually happening. 
the next one quickly, they passed the first and the second post and came to the iron gate leading the city and this opened to them all by itself. So they passed through, they started walking down the street and the angel suddenly left him. Look at the next one, 11. I finally came to his senses, it really true, he said, the Lord sent his angel and saved me from Herod, from the Jewish leaders and planned, their plan to do to me. The next one, when he realized this, he went to the home of Mary, the mother of John, where many were gathered for prayer. The next one, quickly. He knocked at the door and a servant girl named Rhoda came to what open it. We have a long way to go. When she walked around Peter, but she was so overjoyed, he started opening the door, she ran. Peter is standing at the door. I wish you can read to you are you are out of your sense, they insist that it must be an his angel. Let's go on. No, Peter could not knock on the finally open the door. Now I wish you can find between this place and verse 51 where they they were praying at midnight. But we have, we have to we have to read uh, to verse 51 and I have so much to say. Listen. Day angels are scarce. Day angels, they come to do the following. Most of them come for no, it's another topic for that if I go there. Have you found it? Okay. Let's look at another one. Acts 16, 25 to 34. Paul and Silas were put in prison and at midnight, what did they do? You know that story so much. What did they do? They prayed and sang. Twenty-five to thirty-four, around, around, around. What were you doing? And listen, they were praying, singing hymns to God, and other prisoners were listening. Um, one pie maybe. What? Oso a wonder. Um, to me da. Oso a um one pie. You can't sleep. Those of us who want to pray in the night, the way we can sleep. <laughs> Last my wife was laughing at me. Said, hey, I got up, was on the floor, prayed, ah, I was sleeping. The next moment, she seen that I've gone to the bathroom, took in a, taking a shower. I was so definitely sleeping. The next day, she realized I was on the compound. Then she started laughing at me. She said, what about you? My mom, I'm tired. Suddenly, there was an earthquake and massive one. And the prison was shaking them. All the doors immediately flew open. The chains fell off. The time to, to see praise and worship must be done at that time. One of the mistakes I did, which I will not do in my next house, is I want a room which is soundproof. If I was to say, mm, when I can't, mm, I met a mm, baby. I want a room that is soundproof. Because me, if I want to listen to me, I want to hear boom, 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 boom. But nobody can hear it. If the praises doesn't, the song doesn't, the kind of music that if you hear, you can't sleep. Yeah. The jailer woke up. May your enemies wake up to see that you are free. Yeah. Your amen is not good at all. Yeah. Your amen is not good at all. Yeah. Now, let me end on this. As for the prayer points, you didn't ask for it, so I won't give it to you. We are going to pray. The devil is not afraid of your anointing. There's a difference between the anointing and the authority you have. What the devil fears is your authority. Okay. You can have a certificate that you finish school, right? But the one who will employ you is the problem. That is the person who will authorize your certificate. 
So you can get this, you can get the certificate. But the one who authenticate and say you should get this job. So there's a difference. I was teaching sometimes. There's a difference between authority and power. Power is like anointing. Teach you something before. So you will go to Acts chapter 19. Is it Acts chapter 9? No, Acts 16. This is Acts 16. What made Paul and Silas go to prison? Oh, I, I missed it, but whatever it is. I want to talk about the sons of Sceva. These were pastors' children. Actually, they were exorcists. Exorcist means they had power to cast out devils. Can I have it? I want to read that full story. Sons of Skiva. Skiva is S C E V A E S C E V A Skiva. Sons of Skiva. I want to teach you this. Those of you who have been coming from my bridge clinic, I taught it there. I want to use it to teach you the difference between power and authority. A lot of people have power, but the devil doesn't feel your power. Let me teach you this as they are looking for the scripture from me. Yes. Okay. Let me tell you this. Was Jesus anointed? Do you know what to make Jesus? Look, you know, have you watched Jesus before? He walked, looked at Matthew. Follow me. And Matthew will stop whatever he's doing and follow. That is not anointing you. That is authority. And the person just follows. Okay, take me up a bit, please. A group of Jews were, were traveling from town to casting out evil spirits. They were casting out evil spirits. That means they are what? Powerful. Or oh, it's not powerful. Oh, are they powerful? Yeah, if they are casting out this way, they are anointed. They were casting out the most spirits. They were anointed. They tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their incantation, saying, The problem was that they could cast out demons, but Jesus has not given them permission to use his name. So, some of the little demons goes. Let's go. And they said, I command you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches to come out. So, in the name of Jesus, by the name of Jesus, my father is Reverend Yali. <laughs> Seven sons of Skiva a leading priest were doing this. Now, they were priest children and they were seven. A priest child, by virtue of being a priest child, knows certain keys, certain revelations about dealing with demons. How? We be afraid that you are because I mean for all you hear my son right, me start right, me not right, my yet. What you just did is power. When you are told to do it, it's authority. Now, don't change it. Okay, you change it. We'll come back here. I taught you this, those of who came for the first day of the fast, which is Monday. Genesis chapter 13, verse 10. Two people lifted up their eyes and they got different results. Genesis 13, 10. Lord, please let's be together. Go. Lord took a long look at the. Now give me the um, NKG. Why? I would like the lifted up his eyes. The same weddings. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's read. Go. And Lord lifted up his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan. That it was well watered and everywhere before the Lord is to in Gomorrah. Like the garden of the Lord, like the, the land of Egypt as you go towards. So listen, he saw the place like the garden of Egypt. 
He saw it fresh. He told Abraham, I like him. Abraham said, take him. So some of you who marry because you feel. <laughs> now, we all know what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah finally. You know that. Now let's go to verse 14. Verse 14. Let's look at Abraham. Abraham was not doing what Lot did. And it came to pass after Lot had departed. Oh. Oh, I didn't say chapter 4. 13, 14. Chapter 13, verse 14. Verse 10, Lot looked at verse 14. It came to pass after and the Lord said to Abraham, after the Lord had separated from him, lift up your eyes now. So who told him to lift up his eyes? Oh, I didn't hear. Who told him to lift up his eyes? Who told the Lord to lift up his eyes? Himself. Lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are. Northward, southward, eastward, and westward. And all that you, from all the land you see, I give to you, to you and your descendants. Now who took the land. Pastor Soma, don't do that. Please go to the back. All the language you see, I give to you. So the truth is this. Who was instructed by God? I didn't hear you. Who? Me too. So back to um, Acts 19. So this son of Skiba, their father is a priest. So they think by virtue of their father being a priest, they can cast out demons. They've been casting out spirits, evil spirits. They go. So they go and meet another spirit. So Bible said, but one time when they tried it, the evil spirit replied, listen no. <laughs> I know. Oh, let's be cool. I know. I know. Ba, who are you? Your question be you be so Do you know that Moses tried to save the Jews? Acts 17. No, Acts 7. And they told you who made you Lord and will of us. Why did Moses join the call you? Know? So when God called him again, he said, When I go, who should I say sent me? And he said, Say that I am that I am. Then he now knew who sent him. Spiritual things, let me tell you this. If, let's take it that you know that between 3 o'clock to 6, if you pray, your doors open. You can pray, your doors open. But when a man of authority tells you to do it, it doesn't become an ordinary assignment. It makes the grace upon the person support you, which gives you more results than if you knew and you applied it. Okay, let me give an example. I play football. I've stopped for some time. I play. Nobody gives me anything. But those people who play and get something, they are those who have been bought by a team. And the coach tells them what to play. And as they play based on what the coach is telling them, they get 300,000 pounds a week. We who nobody tells us what to play, what you want to play is what you play. If you like, if I want to score, go out, kick it over. You can't do me anything. I will tell you the that you were sacked. So let's move on. Then the man with the evil spirit leaped on them. Now, now before then, let's go back to 15. He said something which was interesting. Let me tell you this. Some people don't know that. Hear me. Look at what the evil spirit said. Jesus, I know. Are you here? Jesus, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? So there were three people in the question. Jesus, Paul, and Paul. Now to the demon, sometimes, yes, Jesus is powerful. But there are some people who have been built up by God that the demons also recognize them as an authority. So the demons didn't even just say, Jesus, I know. He said, I know Jesus. I also know Paul. Wait a Does it mean that demons know us? Yes. 
You can deceive people, but demons know who you are. Jesus and no Paul, I know. By you, who are you? That is why, let me tell you, I'm not scared of you. I always tell people, hey, don't sleep. Don't sleep. Don't try. I'll tell people that the worst mistake you can do if you are not serious with God eh, is to bind demons. But the best you can do is talk to God. Because God, there, He knows you. I don't know whether you understand me. So that's why I'm teaching you from 3 a.m. to 6. That why you are talking to God. God should go and handle them. The way sometimes I cast out demons, if you are not careful, you think I'm a joke. I don't want to tell you. To, you think I'm a joke. Someone they can come and tell me your story. I just tell you, go. I said, Pastor, you didn't pray for me. <laughs> I didn't pray for you. But the person who is worrying you, we have met and we understand what is happening. You go. So he said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know, sorry. Paul, I know. Who are you? You guys say, who are you? So what happened was that then the man with the evil spirit leaped on them. One is to seven. He overpowered them, attacked them with side violence that they fled from the house naked and battered. <laughs> Let me tell you this, please. I'm telling you something. Please hear me. Let me tell you this. Every Christian has power over demons, nest and spirits. Not every Christian has authority. And I've seen Christians eh, who go to church. Forgive me. Oh Lord, oh Lord, every witch, every witch. I stand against you, I stand against you. I bind, I bind, I kill, I kill. Pray, they pray. And they say, Why about two more fees? I'm not going to die. Why two more no, you know, never fear. You will come and meet me. Good day, I saw them. Then, whilst you are in church, you leave. As you are going on the way, they said, Welcome. So, if you look at the Old Testament, hardly will you see anybody struggle with God's fetish. They always struggled with God. They left the prophets to handle the fetish. Study your Bible. As a believer, your inheritance is not with the devil. Your inheritance is in Christ. If even your family have changed your inheritance, like Jacob, there is somebody who can fight for you. And that person is God. So wake up between the 3 a.m. and the 6 a.m. and demand your portion from God. As to how your God will fight that person for you, that one day is none of your business. As for you, you are talking with your God. It's like coming to me and telling me that, Daddy, I realize that there are demons troubling me and I've decided to do three days fasting and deal with it. I will tell you, God bless you. Go and come. Because maybe you want to do three days dry. I can tell you to take a broom and sweep the auditorium one and go home. All the demons will vanish. But you will not believe it. So you go and do the three days dry. But when you are doing the three days dry, you should realize that when you say, I bind you, the people are watching you because you are part of them. So by the time, how many of you have done fasting and prayer? And by the time they came back, their troubles have increased. Do you know what it means? You are dealing with a spirit that is stronger than you. So one day David prayed and said, deliver me from my strong enemy because they are stronger than I. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. 
When my heart is overwhelmed, there's a song. Lead with the rock that is higher than I. Because there is somebody who has a lot of grace than you have. But you think that, oh, you can handle it. So you realize after every fasting, things go bad. Because whilst you're attacking them, they don't mind you. Whilst you're attacking them, they are fighting your other places. But finish. This place is clean. This one is okay. So, the Bible says, 2 Chronicles 20.20. 20. The battle is the law. Second Chronicles 20. The battle is the what? So, April, the battle is what? The Lord. Amen. Oh, I, I'm not here at all. So, let's go on. The story of what happened spread quickly all through Ephesus. To Jews and Greeks are like a solemn fear descend upon the city. The name of the Lord Jesus was greatly honored. Of course. Don't don't ever assume. Are you here with me? Let me give you this. Let me, how many of you have seen Satan before? Oh, nobody here. Okay, how many of you have seen a demon before? A demon. Oh, are you serious? How many of you have seen Jesus before? Real Jesus. Hey. How many of you have seen an angel before? Angel. That's, that should be normal. Ah! You've seen an angel before. God bless. Who else? Angel. Where did you see the angel? Wonderful. Okay, that's a true one. You see? Don't just say Where was the angel? Every camp you saw an angel there. Yes, who has seen an angel before? Listen. Whenever you see any spirit being, it's a sign that spiritually you have grown to that level. Now, if you see a spirit being like a demon, and you don't grow immediately, you can go mad. Your brain can start malfunctioning. But you can see an angel and you can see Jesus and you are okay. Why? Because, let me give an example. Uh, is it you I was talking to or something? I forgot it. Years ago, when I became born again, it happens, but I don't want to give the kind one. Take your seat. I was carried to a witchcraft meeting. I flew there. And when I got there, everything they have planned, I got to know. Now, they could not see me, but I could see them. But out of fear, I think I hit something. And they began to say, somebody was saying they ended the meeting. The following day, or during the day, the people I saw in the dream, when they met me, the attitude towards me changed. They were not nice. They didn't like me. I was like, ah, these are people I'm nice with. Okay, let me give an answer. You have a dream. Somebody who is very close to you slaps you. You wake up in the moment you're going to the person, the person is smiling. It's not a person. But when the person slapped you and you are trying to get to the person, and the person is giving you an attitude, keep praying. Even the person doesn't know that himself or herself has gone to slap. But there's a spirit inside him that recognizes a spirit inside you. You are not getting me. <laughs> you mind me. Okay, the way you are clap is, is not good. Let's close. No, no. Let me end. I'm teaching you things you don't want to take it. Okay, okay. Now, if you try to rather have an attitude like you are angry with the person, what has happened is that you have violated a spiritual rule. The person will defeat you. Because in the spiritual realm, love is a law. So, I'm trying to talk to the person. Please, don't worry. I must not say I'm not going to talk to the person. I must have a free spirit. I have to deal with the person. Sometimes if you are careful, you keep it in prayer, in prayer, before you know, the best will come physically and come and apologize. 
But the truth sometimes is that we begin to pick up an attitude. And when you pick up that attitude in a spiritual realm, you have developed a deficit means defeat, defeatist, defeat, I-S-T, mentality. The person's psychological or mental or spiritual begins to know that you are not strong enough. Why? The righteous are as bold as a lion. One day, let me not mention the one in church. Let me mention years ago. So, but I don't want you to see. I went to a festival. The Spirit of God carried me to a festival. And I saw a church member who was at a festival who has done incantations against a group of friends in church. And what the person has done was that the person has taken bits and pieces of what belongs to them, like nails, hair, the address, took it to the festival so that any glory or whatever their, their friends have, she will have it. And the person physically had one funny spirit, very covetous and jealous. And fear people like that. Fear people who everything you have, they want some. If you move your scarf now, they will want it. Chew a sacra, I want it. <laughs> so, in the dream, in the vision, I hid, saw what they did, and I came to church. And I watched this lady quietly, this thing I've not shared it before, as her friends were going down and she was having everything. One day, I remember the place she was sitting very well. Whilst ministration was going on, I asked an angel to expose her. And she manifested strangely. Started vomiting things. After the service, this her friends went to her. The same friends who didn't know because I passed her not to her try to hold her. And her friends were like, ah, what have we done to you? Then she was like, You think the dress you gave me, so what? Take it. Yeah, yeah, this thing you gave me, so what? Take it. You've not gone to say, give me my dress back. But the person is returning the dress after prayer. Me, me, I'm a pastor. I know why the dresses were being brought back. You, your eye know the see. Sometimes I see this. I'll come to you so, Everything you give me, I'll pay you. And you're quiet. <laughs> They'll pay you. Say fourth watch prayer. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Yeah. I don't know if I went to pray for that prayer. Yeah. Those who have the prayer topics don't share. They should look for their prayer topics. <laughs> now, can I have your attention? Okay, any questions? Let me ask. Let me let you ask questions. I don't want to talk again. Let me keep my nose. Should I give you one of the topics? Only one. Isaiah 11. We pray for the seven spirits of God. Spirit of counsel, spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge. That's the time to ask for that. That's the time to also commit your weakness to God. Your weakness. Your weaknesses. I'm so vulnerable to this thing, Lord. Anytime I see cocaine, I want it. Nobody knows. God. 
When I see this girl, something they do me, God, help me. That's the time to commit your last, your weakness. That's the time Jacob wrestled with God. And Jacob was very open and transparent to God. He said, what is your name? He said, you want my name? I'm a thief. They call me Jacob, supplanter. I did it to my uncle Laban. I finished Esau. I am a professional. Everybody knows me. Many brother, if I see you have something, I want it. Jacob is going hide it from God. That's the place to pray. <laughs> Should I say it? Psalm 139. This is 139. Those of you that I sent you the prayer topic, these ones are not part. The ones I gave you is yours. Is it is this someone three now we have you've examined my heart and Lord you know me. There's no use pretending you see right through me. You know where I stand. You see all I do when you come. But Lord, you never see. Of my words before I speak. Yeah, any questions? You know, if, if you know if I'm down, or you know if I'm laughing, you know, you, you know my situation. Of if I'm crying, Lord, you never sleep. There is no place I can hide from. Your life, I can only survive through you. It's all Psalm 139. Show me somewhere to go, a place you don't go to cover my soul. Oh, no question. Daddy, good evening. Um, can this prayer be in tones from three to six? Because sometimes it gets to a time you don't even know what to say again, but just to speak in tongues. That can that also work from that three o'clock after thanking God and praying about some few things, then you enter into Yeah. Yes and no. You see, it's good you speak in tongues. But the reason why sometimes you like to Jesus likes to pray alone. Alone makes you say things. <laughs> How do you know what I mean by alone? If you are here, say, everybody, let us pray and commit your life to God. You have to tell God, God, help me to stop fornicating. Your brother doesn't know that. Your sister doesn't know that. But when you are alone at the corner here and everybody is somewhere, you can't speak in tongues. Some things must be real. You must be real to God. Have you been wild in prayer before? Gifted. When you are word in prayer, sometimes the English doesn't come home. with your local dialect. On the radio, they have a for the church. That's your young man, you have a job, boss, robots. If I want to be you, that's why you know it's only three kappa. And you breathe. I don't even know what I'm talking about. So in that time, it's like your natural language comes. Now where the hey Julo, hey Julo, hey Julo, now the hey Julo, no. If you are here, I show hey Julo, hey, we can help you as a hey Julo. You are slangy guy. You don't. Know. So much as I understand that, yes, you don't know what to say. That's why I'm trying to give you a lot of instances in the Bible. You see, the problem with all of us is that you see, we are too quick to. If give somebody, I give thirty prayer points. Thirty prayer points. You give somebody thirty prayer points. They read it. Lord, I need your favor in Jesus' name. They read it. Lord, if you cover me, I need it in Jesus' name. You are a joke. If I say I'm taking you to some 139, let's go. One. Verse 1, please. Oh Lord, you have examined my heart and you know everything about me. Lord, this is me. This one cry one hour. Me, me. Lord, you know that I like lying. And I, I don't know why I lie. 
When if you say it and somebody hears you, see, Kakwa no John Drew. Last I heard him praying for and we were telling God is like that. I said, Jairoff, Jairoff. Lord, examine my heart. You have examined. Lord, you know me. If there is anything that is wrong with me, you know it better than me. I'm trying, but I can't. I need your grace. I need this prayer alone. I can pray it one day. One day I told God, some of this prayer you put, you don't can't be. Last year I prayed a prayer. I said, God, if I will lead your people as to be kill me, if this church becomes great and I will change my message to feast, kill me. Don't let me even leave. I don't know if you heard me. I said that thing before. Years ago, I prayed a prayer. I remember that I was on Koforidia Mountains. I said, God, if I will become rich and I forget you, make me poor. Because I always want you. You see, there are certain prayers you, you can't pray because you know that if you can't, you forget it. One thing that I have to God, God, no matter how big I become, I will dance. I will, nobody should take me away from keyboard. God, there are certain things I don't want anybody to take me away from God. They are what has made me. Why? It keeps me humble. So if you can't pray that prayer, so God, if I become rich and I forget you, you know definitely you forget. So you know what God has that God examines your heart. And once a while, God will show you, work on this one. Work on this one. Work on this one. So sometimes, if God is working on your heart, yes, you are going to town like a practical one. Let me use Estelle. Take your seat. Nobody knows it's you. God, God examine my heart. Lord, you know me. And God will show you a vision that you and a customer was fighting. And you lost a contract. So you get to town, the customer starts, then you remember that dream. And you tell the customer, I'm sorry. The customer is shocked. God examined your heart and prompted you. So when the enemy brought the trap, you passed. Your contract is over. Verse 2. You know when I sit down or stand up, you know my thoughts even when I'm far away. Ah, God. Even when I start praying, as soon as I start praying, then I start thinking about the boy who I will marry. God, when I start praying, no, then I forget that you exist. How many of you pray, and in the middle of the prayer, your brain starts moving away? <laughs> Before you know it this morning. About that I'm praying. Am I going to marry this person or not? Lord, you must show me whether it's this person or not. Now the rest, your mouth is the one with the camera. The rest, your brain is thinking, will he hug me? When I see him, will he do this to me? Hey God, what dress should I wear when I meet him? The rest, your brain is not connected. You are far away. God, you know, I try, but my brain is far away. I try. Is it true or is it not true? Is it true or is it not true? If I am mind, you think, hey, will this business come on? Hey, God, you should look at it. God, I'm going to suck a lot. Open doors for me. Then remember, you owe this person, you owe this person, you owe this person, you owe this person, you owe this person. They say, God, so I'm going to tap, tap, tap. I think it's not true. It's not true. Is it true? <laughs> so you realize that it's your mouth. That is talking. You are not praying. So, me, I pray. I prayed all night. Please, you didn't pray all night. You didn't pray all night. Who did that grand care? Yeah? The next one, four. You know what I, I am going to say even before I say it, Lord. Look, look at it. So, you see, Psalm 139, verse 4. If I say it's one prayer, five minutes. Please, when you pray, pray some for me. So, if you pray five minutes for yourself, pray five minutes for me. So, you make him ten. Somebody asked me that, man of God. So, when you are preaching and you just go to the scripture and start, oh, how does it happen? I said, you don't know. 
There are angels that are standing by me that whisper into my ears. What shall you say in this? The brain can't do it. I, you, I have prayed this prayer Psalm 19 for years. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, anything I say, let it be from you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your eyes. Not in your eyes. You, you can tell me I didn't speak, but I don't care. You don't feed me. You don't anoint me. Can I have it? Psalm 19. Keep me from presumptuous sins and let them not have dominion over me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart become acceptable. Then it will like, oh God, I, you, you just keep it. Pray with Psalm 91. He that dwells in the most high God. Have I not shown you? Now I'm doing that. Chant. Sing that. Sing that. Sing that. Turn the fire. Turn. 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 Only I shall be here. The one who can make it. No, 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 no. Not afraid. Nonsense. We didn't say good necessary right. Sometimes I put prayer topic. That's why I ask if you want to send me. Three, four, even send a prayer topic. Someone send me a message. After five minutes, my boy will Me, Me, who put the prayer topic? I've not even started. And sometimes, you, you, the, the funny thing is that I take time with me type you. And you come and tell me that. Uh, maybe. Where are you that man? Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be established in your eyes, O oh Lord, my strength my redeemer. Sometimes I tell God, don't then never let me speak until you speak. Lord, if there's nothing you have to say, I have nothing to say. Huh? I remember there was a time I was leading praise and worship in church. I used to lead Jama, profane Jama in school. Once I was reading the song, then a, a, a German came to mind. I nearly lifted it. The Holy Ghost said, Hey! Share! Jai, Jai, Jai! But then, has it happened to you before? Look at that, has it happened? Before you know, I'm going to see Shatawali. Oh, sorry. Cannot. But your Mrs. Atiblaba said. So listen, sometimes when we give you some scriptures to pray, what you do is that read a scripture like two, three, four, five. If you have different versions, read all the versions. The versions that you read, the one that you understand most, then use it to pray. Don't be in a hurry. Read it like whatever. No. Let me tell you, the prayer that works. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14 that if you speak in tongues, your mind is unfruitful. But let me tell you this. Real prayer that works is when your mind and your tongue agree in prayer. Your body, soul, and spirit are agree. And that's why the Bible says in James 5 that the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous man, man. This is a prayer that you are praying, not your body. Look, everybody around me knows it. If I am in prayer, you touch me. My body is warm. A racing will tell me that, Daddy, should I bring the temperature? Not a moment. <laughs> should I? My body is hot. The bed is hot. Because my whole system gets into it. I'm boiling. Okay. Next question, please. Feel free, oh. Don't go and let somebody deceive you. How many of you are going to wake up at 3 and pray? And then you sleep. You, you start, when you sleep, and then you wake up, continue. Let it be a system to your system. Get it. Yes, who has a question? Nobody has a question. So I'm not if you want to get up and pray at 3 a.m. Begin to pray to God right now that Lord, help me to be a watcher. Daniel chapter 4 says that this is by the decree of the watchers. 
so that the living may know. This is the nature of the five. That God rules in the affairs of men. You must be a watchman. Watch men, watch to see if their thief is coming. You must be a watchman. Can we play the come Holy Spirit? Follow me now. Everybody, please watch the screen. Read what's there. This decision is by decree of the word. By the decree of the word. So now we call that prayer or prayer watch. Right? Prayer watch. So when you keep those things, you are called a watcher. Now, during that time in the morning, you make a declaration. And then when you make the again, the sentence is by the words of the holy ones. Who are the holy ones? Angels. They are taking a message up. That's the time they are going back. They must go with a message. In order that the living may know, me and you may know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men. But he gives you to whomever he will. So you sleep. Somebody is controlling your affairs. Sleep. And my favorite is when I told you that Jesus did it and he walked, came into the all men. I'm looking for you. Hey! Give me the song. building yourself. By the time you get to understand how to deal with the midnight, to midnight prayers, deal with demons and principalities, you would have known God better. I'm reaching for your hands. You hold my life in your hands. Drawing me closer to you. I feel your Power in you, nothing compares to this place where I can see you face to face. I worship you, the Spirit and is true. I'm reaching for your heart, you hold my life. In to you feel your power in you nothing compares to this place where I may see you face to face I worship you in spirit and in truth I'm reaching for your heart I'm reaching
anybody here, you have a problem with your chest or your heart, come to me very fast. Do you know why this thing keeps occurring? You have a pain in your chest or your heart. I'm reaching for thrown against this chest be removed. Every arrow thrown against this chest be removed. <laughs> thrown against this chest be removed. Set them free. Set them free. Set them free. Loose them and let them go. Now, in Jesus' mighty name, I remove these arrows. Be free. your hands. You are brooding over every darkness. You are causing light to shine on darkness. You are brooding. You are brooding over every darkness. You are causing Life to shine on darkness. You are brooding, you are brooding over every darkness. You are causing light to shine from darkness. I want you to lift your hand, say, Lord Jesus, let your light outshine. In the darkness in my life, let your light expose every darkness in my life so that I will learn to live, to serve you. Lift your voice and pray. Say, Lord Jesus, say, let me know your will. Take charge of my life. I trust you so much that I wonder why, Lord Jesus, you have not taken charge. I am yours, completely yours, 
My interest is yours. My purpose is yours. My dream is yours. From this dawn, as I wake up, despite special angels who are assigned for my destiny to encounter me so that my answers will come with speed. Lord Jesus, you said in your word that when Jesus prayed at dawn, by morning, all men came looking for him. By morning, let everybody destined for me to meet, meet me. Any unwanted person that will also join all the men, give me grace, give me strength to overcome and overrule such a person. Clap it and pray.
certain people your husband to be your wife to be they must wait for you they will say I don't know why I don't know why but you've been coming to mind Jesus, we thank you for this evening and for what you have taught us. Lord, going home yesterday, you were speaking to me on this. And many missed the opportunity to be part of it. As I've taught it because you've asked me to, they have been authorized to do it. Let the grace upon my life be upon them. Lord, as they pray this prayer, let great testimonies that we have never heard before in this ministry, let it be our portion. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.